today we're going to have a look at something a little bit different. We're going to be using event-driven Ansible, but we're going to be using the EDA controller that's part of the platform. And we're going to do a little bit of NetOps, and maybe we're going to do something a little bit different and use events in a slightly different way with some chat ops. So the first thing we want to do, let's go and have a look at the EDA controller. So this is the EDA controller. As I mentioned, it's part of the platform. And right now we have two rule books running. So these two rule books, you know, they're focusing on different sources, right? So I have a port status rule book, which is basically monitoring network telemetry. So I do have a network environment. Let me put up the network diagram. And we can see that from this network diagram that we have three switches all interconnected, right? So from a telemetry point of view, we're going to be taking the telemetry information. We're going to be listening for specific events. And based on that, we can use event driven Ansible to then go and trigger some uh, some automation, right? Some some changes. OK, and we also have another uh, rule book, and that is the chat ops rule book. Now, the chat ops rule book is be going to be listening to some kind of uh, incoming webhook that we can then use in EDA um, as a source and we can obviously trigger uh, a few things right but also part of this is the fact that we can have a rule audit so we can actually have a look at the rule audit we can dive into any of these events and we can see what the payloads were where it came from in terms of like a webhook and what the ultimate action was right so this will link you directly to the automation controller where you'll be able to see the actual job that ran so what are we going to be doing? We're going to be basically running a few things, a few tasks, changing up some telemetry, creating some events, and hopefully uh, the EDA controller is going to be taking care of some of this for us. So the best way to do this is let's go back to our uh, automation controller and the automation controller itself. Let's have the look at the job so we can see when things take place. We have a system here where we're running our network. We're keeping all of these switches interconnected and all networked and running. And how do we gather this information, right? We're gathering all the telemetry using G GMNI, right? So we're going to basically do a pub sub and pull the information that we want, the stuff that we want to observe. We want to look at port states. We want to look at things like BGP changes, any of this type of stuff. So that was, that's basically what we're doing. And from there, we're taking that telemetry and we're pushing it to Kafka. And Event Driven is listening to that Kafka message in queue. So if we have a look, if you want to see basically a sample, we can go and we say, I want to listen to these uh, switches. I'm going to log in with my Ansible, Ansible account on these switches. And we can see here, for example, what is the current state of BGP? Our BGP is established, so we've got the two links running. And should something change, you know, technically this would be, uh, would pop up saying idle or something like that. And that's what we're listening to and what we're trying to observe for any type of BGP change really so this is all about uh, the telemetry that information that we're gathering from the switching right we want that streaming data that streaming telemetry okay so first thing is let's have a look at a very simple example right so this simple example we're going to log into our switch here okay and we can see if we do a show run we can see the switch is configured we have three ports on the switch we have bgp configured and everything's ready to go so what happens if we try to simulate a port failure? Now, I understand that these use cases aren't super heavy in terms of use cases, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to show uh, the fact that we can actually use event-driven Ansible to work with network telemetry. So if I go and I do a show run int f1, I want to look at the config of the interface. You can see there's nothing on that interface. It's just up. There's nothing else taking place. So what happens if we were to shut that interface down? Now, if we shut that interface down, that now becomes an event. And that event gets pushed into our event source. And event-driven Ansible will then pick that up. And as you can see, it's now starting to work, right? So it's updating the repo. From there, it's now running the desired port status job all driven via event driven ansible so if we go into this we can see the output and if we refresh it you can see that the, the switch that we've modified the port has been the one that has now been corrected right so this was event driven ansible listening for some kind of a port change the port change took place and it issued a a task to controller to go and rectify this right so if we go back to eda let's have a look here you can see that I've got a single fire account, so an event that actually took place. 
And if I go have a look here, you can see the port is down. Event has taken place. If we listen to the, look at the events themselves, we can see the payload of the event. And basically, that's what we were listening for. We were listening for this down status, right? So port's gone down, and event-driven Ansible has then gone and triggered some kind of remediation action by triggering the job template of uh, the desired port state, right? So that's one example of, of what's happened. Now, we've acted on a port going down. But what about some kind of configuration uh, method? You know, what happens if I wanted to actually bring a port up? Let's say I go and I plug in a port, and I want that port going up to be an event where I can probably automatically configure um, the port switch, right? So if I go now and look at another switch, if I go to switch two, we're going to get into the switch two, and let's go and have a look. Uh, let's do a show run. So we have a show run interface one. We can see that this port is now down, right? So we want to change that and we want to see what, what's going to happen. This is all the config that we have. So let's go back to our jobs here. We can go back to the jobs and we can s keep that open so we can see if something gets uh, kicked off, right? So if we go now into that port and we now say no shut. Okay, so now we bring in that port back up right so this is now another event right this is the admin status of that port has been changed we can see that uh, we now running a brand new port configuration job um, after our sync to our repo so basically what's happened now is because that port has become live event driven ansible has picked up that event it said now we need to go talk to controller i want this port to be configured and now we can go through the automation right so the port will go and get configured from a single source of truth so if we go and we have a look again now let's do a show run into earth one and we can now see that this has now been configured automatically as a switch port for uh, vlan access 30 right so again just a simple use case of using events to trigger some kind of configuration now from a source of truth this is all great, but what about doing something else, right? Something a little bit more um, advanced, right? So what about troubleshooting? Now, part of the whole event-driven story is the fact that, you know, we can automate actions. That doesn't always necessarily need to be a remediation or self-healing action. It could be something like fact-gathering to get information. It could be a situation of opening up you know support tickets or anything like that but it could also be about troubleshooting so let's say we had a specific event that took place you could take all of the troubleshooting knowledge that your team has about what they would typically apply to try to find the issue we could codify all of that and then ultimately that became that can become the response to this event so now we have automated troubleshooting that will automatically do all of the stuff we need to do and then at the same time we can push that to some kind of ticketing system so that our engineers when they come back and look at the tickets all that hard work and fact gathering and all that stuff that they would typically have to do before they can even fix something would now be available to them so now we can go and have a look at doing something like uh, BGP troubleshooting. You know, we're going to have D BGP running already. It's already on our switches. Let's break it and see what we can do. So if we're going to have a look at the switch now, we can do a quick show of the BGP itself. So we can just do show IP BGP. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, so we can have a look here. You can see BGP is established, right? So everything is connected and working as it should be. But we're going to break this, right? So if we go and we say, let's first have a look at this. So we can see the configuration. So the configuration is there. So now if we go into the switch, and we're going to bring this down, right? So when we can bring this down, what are we doing? We're effectively just breaking that up, right? So if we go now and we have a look, you'll see we've got an idle state. There's no connection there. And let's see what this happens. Okay, so now we can see that controller is kicked in, right? Controller has now synchronized the repository and it's now running BGP troubleshooting. So remember, this was a playbook that we built based on the knowledge of our teams to keep troubleshooting consistent, right? So it's doing all the troubleshooting that we typically have to do. Now, this has been completed now. But one thing I want to bring in now is the fact that 
we're trying to give some feedback to the team. So we've gone and we've done a bunch of our BGP checks and troubleshooting, but you can see there's a task here around notification, right? So this means that uh, we've actually done a notification in the sense that we've sent notification through to our channel. So you can see we've popped up with a BGP error, right? BGP session is idle, problematic path is 10.0.0.4. All of the stuff we got using the trigger that came through to event driven ansible to say hey there's a problem in terms of the session state that we're looking for and then obviously controller's gone and run the templates that we use to troubleshoot the network and then part of that is to give us feedback immediately right so our technical teams could be working and the company technical network chat pops up to say hey there's a bgp error all driven by an event right so this isn't driven by someone you know, figuring out there's an issue on the network. This is the network itself telling us what's going on. So that's cool. So from there, we can obviously go dive in and remediate and actually use chat ops to drive something, right? So let's say we wanted to actually back up our switches. Instead of going to the actual switch and backing them up or anything like that, or even going into controller and running this, perhaps you want to just back up a single switch. Perhaps you want to be able to just go into your, your chat application and use chat ops that way. So we can just say back up ceos1 that's our switch and we can obviously trigger that now obviously the host names etc uh, we can always deal with that with regex right but you can see immediately in the background that controller is actually now backing up these switches so we have a look here you can see that this is now running this job we can see it's working specifically against that switch and we can see that everything has been backed up which is great now part of this is also you know how do we you know work with us so part of this is also what are we going to do with this config what are we going to do with this backup so not only have we driven via chat ops that goes through event driven ansible and ultimately triggers a job inside a controller we're now integrating something else and that is using something like service now as a ticketing system so if we go and we have a look at our service now let's go and refresh this and we should see that we've now actually got a new ticket that's been created. You can see here we go. The chat request was logged from whatever chat room, whatever the trigger was, whatever the channel was. All of this information is coming out of that event payload. We've used that information to create the ticket. And if we go into the ticket itself, you'll see that we've, we've actually put the configuration file there. So you can see here the config file has been stored and it's now sitting there. We could typically open this file up. So if we downloaded that, we grabbed the file, there's a configuration that we, we basically backed up via chat. So we're using chat ops with net ops, all going through event driven Ansible. And that is how we're able to, to work with all these events to basically take us through to the next level of automation.